Johnny, uh, we have one of the two unbeaten teams in the NFL, the Bears, along with the Rams at 3 and 0. The Redskins struggling at 1 and 2, a surprise to their fans. That's right. I was talking to Joe Gibbs yesterday. He said the last team he would choose to play with their situation now would be the Chicago Bears, who are 3 and 0. They now have offense to go along with their defense. They beat the Redskins in the playoffs last year and the game has to be played at Soldier Field so things do not look good for the Washington Redskins but we're expecting a great football game there's a lot of electricity here and I think we're about ready for the kickoff Tim the Johnny the Bears have won the toss and they will receive they'll defend to our left in their dark home jerseys Jeff Hayes who is also the punter handles the kickoff duties for the Redskins number five will kick it off the deep men for the Bears Dennis Gentry number 29 at the top of your screen and speedster Willie Galt number 83. Awaiting Hayes kickoff at the goal line. So the Redskins trying to get well here, well in the standings, that is, with a turnaround from their start that could well have been an 0 3 start with a squeaky win over Houston. And a reverse right away to Wilbur Marshall from Willie Galt. And he tripped, is tripped up at the 15 yard line. So a little trickery by the Bears on the opening play of the game, but. Stuart Anderson and Rafael Cherry are down there to prevent it from making a big game. The Bears will bring out offensively their miracle worker of Thursday night last, Jim McMahon at quarterback, Walter Payton and Matt Suey, the running backs, Willie Golf, Dennis McKinnon coming into his own at wide receiver. Andy Frederick will start for the injured Jimbo Colbert at left tackle, Bort Silgenberg, Tom Thayer for the injured Kurt Becker at right guard, Van Horn, and Emory Moorhead. So two key performers for the Bears offensive line out of action at least for the start of this game. First down just inside Chicago's 15 yard line. Suey in motion. Pass was tipped by the linebacker number 55 Kaufman and intended for the wide receiver Dennis McKinnon on first down. So it is second and 10 for Chicago. So we're seeing the pattern right away. The Chicago Bears have really changed their offense. They're throwing more on first down as we look at the Redskins defensive line. A four man defensive line for the Redskins like the Bears. Not too many teams in the league still using it. Man, Butts, Grant and Manley. Kaufman and Olkowitz and Milot are the linebackers. And the secondary, the speedy Darrell Green, Vernon Dean on the corners, Tony Peters and Curtis Jordan are the safeties. Second and ten, Chicago. They fake the pass and they give to Peyton. Peyton in trouble and McMahon threw a block on Darrell Grant, but Peyton will still be dropped for a loss as the Redskins make another outstanding defensive play. Charles Mann made the tackle. And a loss of two results, so it is third and 12. You know, the Washington Redskins defense hasn't really played all that badly so far, even though they are one and two. Uh, they rate statistically very well in the NFC, but the big thing is they haven't created the turnovers. As you know, Tim, they only have one interception and a total of two turnovers, so they're really minus 10 in that category, and they've always been great at turnovers. It's been a severe problem for them and a factor in their losing two of their first three. Third and 12 for the Bears. A flag down. Rolling is McMahon. Upfield a wobbly pass out of bounds. The intended receiver, Ken Marjoram, well covered, fell down out near the 40-yard line, but the pass was nowhere near him. So the Redskins stifle the Bears offense but a flag on that third down play. Offside is the preliminary signal against Washington. Bob Frederick our referee with his first call of the afternoon. Defense offside number 32 third down will be replayed. Vernon Dean the right corner coming up to blitz on the play was offside. So the Bears get another breath. It is third down. And about seven to go. The ball is at the 17 yard line. The Redskins have not run into penalty problems. Turnovers, as we have mentioned, have been their severe deficiency in the first three games. Cherry and Wilburn, the rookies, are in the backfield of the secondary of the Washington Redskins. Three wide receivers for the Bears out of the shotgun. McMahon has time. Upfield for Marjoram. Can't hold on. A diving attempt by Ken Marjoram, number 82. Darrell Green had the coverage, but Marjoram could not hold on to the football, so the Bears will punt. 
Well, that's what he's noted for his great catches. He actually had the ball, but when he hit the turf, it bounced loose. As Jim McMahon noticed the, how thick he looks in the waist, that's not overweight, fans. That is the fact that he wears that, that heavy uh, rib cage protector because he had that kidney injury last year. He also has the neck injury and uh, has uh, been banged around in his short NFL career. Ken Jenkins awaiting the punt of Maury Buford. Buford number eight for the Bears standing at the four yard line of Chicago. Jenkins a former Detroit Lion at the 45 of the Washington Redskins. Buford's wobbly punt comes up short. And Jenkins will let it bounce. It takes a Chicago bounce and rolls to the 41 yard line of the Redskins. So Washington will get their first offensive possession a 42 yard punt by Buford Joe Theismann will bring the Redskins out John Riggins will start at the running back spot the receivers are Monk and Muhammad the tight ends Warren and Didier and across the front Joe Jacoby Russ Grimm Rick Donnelly for the injured Jeff Bostick still in that role R.C. Thielman gets the start today ahead of Ken Huff alongside Mark May Thielman acquired from the Atlanta Falcons and a somewhat controversial deal for receiver Charlie Brown making his first start today first down Redskins good field position out of the eye. Reagan met at the line breaks a tackle and carries Bears for a six yard pickup. Wilbur Marshall finally wrestled him down. And there is a sample of the strength of John Riggins defensively the four man front for the Bears Hartenstein McMichael Hampton and Dent Hampton coming off knee surgery and feels that he's almost there but they still don't practice him. Every day in uh, in practice during the week, Wilson, Singletary, and Wilbur Marshall with Richardson and Frazier on the corners. Sean Gale for the injured Dave Dewerson with Gary Fensick at safety. Riggins again on second and five, picked up about two. Richard Dent, number 95, tripped him up. So the Bears hurting a little bit. We gave you two offensive substitutions for them, and Sean Gale for the injured Dave Dewerson defensively. The Redskins are without linebacker Monty Coleman, a key figure in their nickel defense particularly. He's on injured reserve with a hamstring pull. And of course, Ken Coffey and Jeff Bostick are still out with injuries. And the refrigerator man, 320-pound William Perry's in that defensive line now for the Bears. Let's see what the Redskins do on this third situation. Quick pass is complete to the tight end Didier, and he has the first down for Washington. Gary Fensick made the tackle at the Bear 45-yard line. An eight yard gain and a first down. A good heads up play by Theismann because the Bears came with the blitz. Singletary up the middle. Theismann with the quick pass out to Didier. Gary Fensick had to come over from his safety spot to make the tackle. A first down for the Redskins, who obviously are going to try and control this game on the ground, try and develop, even though they have rushed very well or pretty well this year, they haven't come up with the big plays, but they're going to try and control the ball. First down at the Bear 45, opening offensive possession for Washington. Riggins again, good hole. And he's met by the linebackers at the 42 yard line of the Bears. Cliff Thrift, number 52, acquired this year on waivers from the San Diego Chargers by the Bears. And Buddy Ryan, the defensive coordinator, likes what he's seen and has worked him into the defense. And that defense today includes four linebackers in some situations, as we just saw there. A little bit of a change for the Bears defensively. Joe Theismann. 30,000 career passing yards in his 12th season in the NFL and making his 64th consecutive start. Riggins barrels for the first down. John Riggins with a big hole out the right side behind Thielman and May. Singletary and Fensick for the Bears, 50 and 45, made the tackle. Good heads up running by Riggins, number 44. As Otis Wilson, 55, blitz from the outside. Riggins came inside the trap. The trap went on the uh, linebacker, and Riggins just uh, muscled his way through. He told Coach Gibbs this week he wants to play a little bit more. As you know, he's been splitting the duty with uh, George Rogers, and uh, Riggins there with a nice individual effort. He's over 10,000 yards, rushing fifth on the all time list. And let me tell you something. When you're 36 years old, running in the National Football League still, you got to be some kind of runner and he's off to a good start averaging four yards a carry Singletary injured on the play we'll be back in a moment a scoreless football game at Chicago Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris at Soldier Field you're looking at Mike Singletary one of the top linebackers in football injured on the last play replaced by second year man Ron Rivera 
And the Bears uh, continue to go with four linebackers. They have four down linemen. They've also made a change there with McMichael playing on the left defensive end. And William Perry, the rookie from Clemson, at the right tackle spot with Hartenstein out. So quite a few shuffles here by the Bears defensively. The Redskins offensively have the football and rolling out to his right is, is Feisman. He has dropped just over the line of scrimmage by Richard Dent. And that might have been a broken play. It, uh, it looked like there was a little hesitation at the start here. And watch 95, Richard Dent. He comes from the other side of the line here, just comes right down the line, and he takes a shot at, at Joe Theismann as there was a little bit of a mix-up. Theismann senses him coming and goes dips under just before the hit. And that's one thing that Joe Theismann is so good at. He's so good at many things, but uh, he knows how to avoid that, that big hit. No gain on the play, however. Second and 10, you actually saw John Riggins throw a block. Singletary is back in for the Bears. Here's Reagans, the runner. Non pare for his size and age. He gets to the 31 yard line. Steve McMichael, number 76, and Gary Fensick, number 45, combine on the big man. And did you see who hit him? Uh, William Perry, 320 pounds, hit Riggins, and Riggins bounced off it and got an extra two or three yards. So uh, I'd say Riggins still has a little power. There he is, the refrigerator man. Third down play for the Redskins, and they send in Keith Griffin and a third receiver, Gary Clark. Clark 84, Griffin the running back, number 35. Clark in motion. Up the middle, wide open, the tight end. That's Didier for another Washington first down to the 21-yard line with Fensick making the tackle for Chicago. Clint Didier. The former pass catching made of Neil Lomax at Portland State. And the key here was the man in motion. Gary Clark went outside. Didier waited for him to clear outside, and then Didier came up over the middle, and it was Gary Fensick, 45, who had to make the tackle. Clint Didier, who, who catches a touchdown almost uh, every four catches, so we'd have to say he's a clutch receiver. Good speed for basically a tight end. First down, Washington threatening here in the first period. 8.30 to play. Their first offensive possession. Good protection for Theismann in the corner, and it is incomplete. Intended for Calvin Muhammad, number 89, right at the goal line. On the coverage was Mike Richardson, number 27. Theismann, two out of three passing, and this one was nearly perfect. One on one, he just put it up and let the two guys go after it, and Muhammad almost made a circus catch here. He's got the outside position on uh, Richardson, came down. I don't think he would have had both feet in it had he hung on to the ball. So the Redskins still on the move. It was a long afternoon for Muhammad last week. Oh, he did sure not catch a pass. He had a couple of drops. He ran a couple of long routes. Believe me, uh, he wants to have a big day today. Riggins. Over the 20 yard line of the 19. Gained about two yards. It'll leave third and eight for the Redskins. And you know, they're not always uh, using the one back. That time they had Warren in the backfield. As you look at Joe Gibbs, who is a little bit frustrated, but he says, We're not going to change everything just because we're starting off one and two. He said, We started off 0 2 last year. We had uh, 0 5 one year. He says, uh, We've just been analyzing it and we're going with Joe Theismann. He's passed for over 30,000 yards. He's done a lot of great things for us, and he says, we'll get it all together. Theismann brings him out on third and nine. Griffin is the running back, and Dan Hampton, a little wild anticipation, <laughs> leaped into the Washington backfield. And uh, as far as we could see, was not drawn over. Let's wait for the call. Referee Bob Frederick discussing it with his officials. Was there movement on the part of a Redskin? Encroachment on the defense, number 99, third down. There was yeah. not. Well, you had to figure that was the, the call because nobody else came across or moved at all except Hampton. And boy, he uh, was the first one back there, wasn't he? <laughs> there was an inviting hole for him there. <laughs> he was going to make sure he got into it. So it is third down and about four yards, a long three. Keys has come in on the front, number 98, Gale and Phillips have come into the Bears secondary 23 and 48. Theismann the pass. Has time. Complete. Good catch in traffic with the coverage by Phillips. And another Redskin first down. They're at the seven yard line. It was Gary Clark the rookie from the USFL out of James Madison. Good pass protection for Theismann who waited for Clark to come right across the middle. He only had a step on Phillips but Theismann put it right there for the first down key play by Joe Theismann who as you know is off to his 
slowest start. He's only completed 49% of his passes, but boy, he was all confidence yesterday. It's hard to knock Joe Theismann's confidence. First and goal, Washington. They're opening offensive possession. Reagan. Reagan stacked up and dropped for a loss. He might have got over the line of scrimmage with forward progress. Singletary and Hampton putting the stop on Big John Riggins. And they spot it at the seven yard line. It'll be second and goal. And there is Mike Ditka who can harken back to the victory a year ago over Washington, but also knowing that the next week he was beaten by San Francisco. The goal is the Super Bowl for both of these coaches. And this is the rematch of that playoff game last year. Riggins with a big hole touchdown. John Riggins had all kinds of room to ramble out the right side. Over the right tackle position, Mark May, Thielman number 69, the left guard. In fact, he had a uh, personal convoy there. As you can see, the block uh, uh, trap outside, and he just followed his uh, blockers in there. And you can see number 68, Russ Grimm, with the key block on Fensick, and Riggins goes in for the touchdown. You talk about the way the Hogs play, well, that's the way they play. They block, and they run, and Riggins motors behind him. The point after by Mark Mosley is good. And so the Redskins march down the field starting from their own 41 yard line and have taken a seven to nothing lead. OK you talk about offensive line blocking from the offside. This is Grimm and Jacoby right here both pulling from the left to the right through a gaping hole. Good block by Didier to keep up. Uh, Otis Wilson out of there and then Riggins just follows through and it was a huge huge hole watch it 68 and 66 the good block there by Didier and in they go two blocks Jacoby and Grimm and it was a touchdown that's the way the Redskins do it all right and Willie Gall had trouble in the sun with that ball coming down and went through the end zone probably would not have brought it out anyway Jeff Hayes kickoff landing about two yards deep and Galt looking up uh, clearly lost it in the sun. So the Bears will start for their second offensive possession from the 20 yard line. The Redskins going 59 yards in 13 plays an impressive opening drive using up 724 on the clock. Now the Bears have had quite a string of games in which they have had the possession 27 consecutive games they have had the ball more than their opponent. But the Redskins have chipped away a good chunk here in the first period. Six minutes remaining first quarter. Peyton the lone setback now Suey in motion. Peyton gets away from one tackler but has dropped for a loss. And it was Darryl Green coming up from the corner to make the tackle. The pressure came from Butts and Manley on the initial charge by Peyton straight ahead. So the fired up Redskins. Now the defense doing the job. Yes it was really Dexter Manley number 72 who got across and uh, forced Peyton to go wide and Manley's the man who spoke a little bit out there uh, earlier this week about knocking Peyton out of the game. He got a lot of flack from that and the Chicago Bears have kind of jumped on that as uh, their psychological advantage. Loss of a yard on the play second and 11. Great job for McMahon. Intended for Suey incomplete. And it's intercepted rather by a Curtis Jordan. Jordan brings it back. Jordan a flag down got to the 25 yard line. And Suey in a lot of traffic there. Johnny as McMahon let it fly and Curtis Jordan just had a freebie. He just waited for the ball to come down to him. That's right. He was playing in deep center field. And that penalty is going to be after the change of possession. And it's going to be Washington's ball. Curtis Jordan just played way out in center field and I think the mistake here that Jim McMahon made was watching his receiver all the way. Personal foul flip on the return number 75 and it will be a first down and 10. We'll see it again. Now you can watch Curtis Jordan he's dropping way back and see McMahon is watching Matt Suey all the way his head is looking straight down the middle of the field. And Suey runs right into all the coverage. Look at all those Redskins. And Curtis Jordan had a gimme, and he took it back. Washington has the ball and a chance to go up by two touchdowns, and that's a key for the Redskins. They are a much better football team, wouldn't you agree, Tim? 
when they're ahead, when they can get on top of you. They're not as good from coming be from behind. Curtis Jordan's second interception of the season for the team, his first of the year. Well, the way their defense has stopped the Bears, I would agree with you totally if they could continue that. Riggins on first down, picked up about a yard, tripped up by Singletary. Jordan's 18 yard return of the interception nullified by the clipping penalty against Dave Butts. But nonetheless, the possession in Bears territory at the 42. No gain on that play as we see Jim McMahon got to be talking to himself about why he released that ball into a bevy of Redskins. And the opportunity for Curtis Jordan to come up with the pickoff. Second and 10. See whether that information holds up on this series. What a catch by Monkey. Dropped the ball. And it is ruled incomplete. Marshall picked it up. The crowd here thinking that it should have been a reception and a fumble recovery by Wilbur Marshall. Leslie Frazier put the hit on Art Monk. And it is ruled incomplete. A circus try by Monk. Had the ball in the air, but didn't have it when he came down to the ground. And an injured player for the Redskins is number 69, R.C. Thielman. Okay, and that is the key as to whether Monk, uh, as you'll notice, Theismann kind of throws into the coverage. A linebacker almost tips it. He makes a super grab, and then there's the contact. And when he comes down, Boom, the ball is jolted loose. I'd have to say that it's a correct call by the officials. 426 remaining first period. The Redskins seven, the Bears nothing. There's R.C. Thielman, the former Pro Bowler acquired from the Atlanta Falcons, off with an injury. Ken Huff has come in to replace him. Third and ten. Feisman under pressure. Finds some room and hits his man. It'll be close to the first down. That is Gary Clark, the rookie wide receiver number 84. See where they mark it. The Bears went with a normal four-man rush that time, and that uh, allows Theismann, he can, a uh, little time to survey the situation, runs out of the pocket, could have run up the field, but decided that uh, Clark was deep enough that he thought he had the first down, but he's not quite there. It's going to be fourth and short as Leslie Frazier knocks Clark out of bounds. So here it comes, fourth and one at the 33-yard line. Perry and Tripp and Rivera have all come in defensively for the Bears on fourth and short. Riggins with Wansley, and it's Riggins. Riggins off the left side is hit at the line of scrimmage. It'll be close. The forward progress may have him there. The crowd aroused on the hit by Marshall and Richardson, but will wait for the mark. It's going to be very, very close. Riggins uh, saw things jammed up and dipped to the outside. There were no blockers there. It was a case of two bodies against one, and it's going to be very, very close. Riggins has been bothered with a sore back and the flu and so on. And they are stopped short, it would appear, by just a few inches. So the Bears' defense has held the Redskins. 4-12 to play, first period. It'll be Bears football when we return. They trail 7-0. A lift for the Bears offense from this group. The Bears defensive squad that just stopped Washington, fourth and short, at Chicago's 32-yard line. First down, Bears. They trail 7-0. Peyton and Suey are the running backs. A long count. Straight ahead is Matt Suey picking up about two. The center of that defensive front of Washington converging on the play. At the bottom of the stack, Dexter Manley, number 72. It will be second and about eight. We have a, a full house here at Soldier Field. About 65,000 fans. The Bears' ninth straight sellout. But that pales in comparison to Washington. I think uh, Washington has 143 straight sellouts. That's what you call support of your football team. Second down and eight. And they shift to the I formation. Vault out to the right, McKinnon to the left. They fake the pitch. Inside is Suey. Suey is straightened up by linebacker Rich Millot, number 57. They had a little extracurricular activity involving Keith Van Horn of the Bears and Daryl Green of the Redskins. Slight physical mismatch. The officials are there quickly to break that up. Actually, it was Dennis McKinnon and Daryl Green that kind of got into it, and then Keith uh, Van Horn tried to be the peacemaker. 
Third down, a long four for the Bears out of the shotgun, and they give it to Peyton. Peyton looked like he might throw. Now he's in traffic and will be short of the first down. Walter Peyton had receivers downfield. And by the time that he decided to run with it, the Redskins reacted very well defensively. Curtis Jordan, number 22, putting the tackle on Peyton, and Chicago will have to punt again. You hit it right on the head, Tim, because that was the fake of the old, the old Statue of Liberty. Peyton was going to throw the ball to Kenny Marjoram down the field. Right there he was going to throw, and he saw that Marjoram was covered well by Wilburn, and then a whole bunch of Washington Redskins came in to put Peyton down the Bears punt. Maury Buford standing at his 25. The Redskins thus far seem to be very well prepared for the Bears offense that has been shown, including two or three of the little trick type plays. Buford the punt. The deep man is Gary Clark. Signals fair catch at the 24 yard line of the Redskins. 38 yard punt by Buford, former San Diego Charger. And so the Redskins will have a pretty good field position to start and I spent Thursday afternoon at the Redskins practice Johnny and everybody seemed to be looking for clues as to the mood the attitude of the Redskins struggling to a one two start they could have lost the game to Houston and been 0 and three they didn't play well in that game that they won but uh, really there was an air of calm and confidence and I think that's been exhibited here in the first quarter this afternoon and anybody that was worried about uh, Joe Theismann should be relieved he threw the ball in practice as well as anybody can. Rogers in the lineup now. Out to Didier. Didier is tackled immediately by Sean Gale, number 23, but a gain of maybe six yards on the play for the Redskins. Theisman has been sharp in the opening going here. With uh, George Rogers in there, it was a simple play action, just a little handoff to kind of freeze people for a moment. Didier out there with Sean Gale on the coverage, just a simple stop, like a hitch pass, and they get. Uh, five yards about four yards five yards out of it and the Redskins will always take that on first down if they can get it second and a long four for the Redskins Ken Huff continues at right guard for Thielman mm -hmm. this is Rogers big hole out the right side Rogers all the way to the 40 yard line they'll spot it at the 43 of the Bears pushed out by Wilbur Marshall and George Rogers a 31 yard gain with a lot of running room out the right side and almost the same identical play watch the off lineman pull around and the hole was so big they sealed here and Riggins just said oh God big hole I mean I should say Rogers and went to the outside beautiful offside line play Russ Grimm and Joe Jacoby 66 and 68 all around they throw the key block take go uh, Otis Wilson out of the play and then Rogers takes it up the sidelines as the Redskins on the move again. Well, this is something the Redskins have not been doing, even in Joe Gibbs' own words, making the big play. That was one there, and here's another. Rodgers, over the 30, gets by a tackler. Pulled down at the 15-yard line of Chicago by Sean Gale. Two consecutive big runs for George Rodgers. First down, Redskins, and an injured Bear player back at the line of scrimmage. Well, basically what they did again was the same thing. Here comes uh, Jacoby and Grimm. It was a counter play where Rodgers jabbed his step to the left. Otis Wilson was blocked and then Rodgers and Gary Fensick doesn't miss many tackles, but he did there as Rodgers uh, just kind of gave him the double footwork and went right on down the field. The Redskins on the move, whether it be Riggins or Rodgers. The first down will be at the 14 yard line. There are Rodgers numbers for this season, averaging 5.1. He and Riggins have had about equal time carrying the ball. Joe Gibbs told us that he would start Riggins and then he would go with what he called the hot man the hot hand and uh, right now he's going to have to stick with Riggins for with the Rodgers for a while. Here is Otis Wilson the injured bear player on that last play being assisted off but he looks like he's OK. He's the man that's been coming across the line of scrimmage and taking the brunt of all those linemen coming uh, his way. And I think the real key for the Redskins has been the counter, the jab step. That's always been in their repertoire, but it seems to be working particularly well against the Bears who are aggressive on defense, and they'll charge with that first move. And if you get them charging one half a step one way or just to hesitate, you know, that can really set up. And they have set up the same play three or four times. Rivera has come in for Wilson, and they now have that four linebacker alignment that Buddy Ryan, their defensive coordinator, introduced this week in practice. Flip Thrip with Singletary, Rivera, and Wilbur Marshall. 
The Redskins have an impressive record when they get out in front. The point you made earlier, Johnny, about they're harder to beat when you're coming from behind against them. They protect the leads well, and they have an opportunity again here. Rodgers one more time. This time, Dan Hampton slashes through and drops him for a loss of about six yards. They'll spot it at the 19-yard line. We'll call it a five-yard loss. Okay, now what you have to watch here is Dan Hampton. He said he wasn't going to go for that counter, and he was going to come across the line of scrimmage and follow these linemen when they go this way so that he could get in the play. Now watch what he does. He's actually the man to the left there. Here he comes, 99, comes through, decides to go where the uh, pulling linemen go, and number 99, Dan Hampton, on the tackle. It is second and 14. Play action, the pass complete to Art Monk, got maybe four yards back to the initial line of scrimmage. On the coverage, Mike Richardson, who put the hit on him immediately, number 27. Monk had a big day last week against the Eagles in the losing cause with seven catches, and he's off to another fine start. There's a man who broke my partner's heart last year as we come to the end of the quarter as he broke the uh, record Johnny Morris held for the NFC in receptions for a season. The new NFL leader at 106 for a season, Art Monk. We'll be right back. Third down and 10 at the Bears 14. Quick pass to the corner. Incomplete intended for Calvin Muhammad. Thrown a little high. The coverage was good by Frazier. And Theismann appeared to lob it up a little higher to give Muhammad some kind of chance at it, but he really didn't have much of an opportunity. The Bears went into their famed 46 defense, which is named after a former player, Doug Plank, who was number 46. But uh, with an odd alignment, and they just blitz linebackers, and Joe Theismann, and everybody knows that when that happens, you got to get rid of the ball quick, and that's what he had called. So he had the right play call, but it was well covered. So the field goal try by Mosley from the 22-yard line. Dead in front of the posts, and the Redskins extend their lead. A 32-yard field goal by the veteran Mark Mosley. We're just underway in the second quarter. Washington 10, Chicago nothing. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field, where Mark Mosley's 32-yard field goal has extended the Redskins' lead 10 to nothing over the Chicago Bears. The Bears, Johnny, have two yards of offense to this point. They have been stymied by the Redskins defensively, plus the Redskins have used up the clock on three possessions. And it is Willie Galt taking Jeff Hayes' kickoff. Galt in full flight. just recently put Galt on the kickoff return because of his 9-300 yard speed. It was Jeff Hayes, number five, who got deeped a little bit. He was the man that had a chance to get him there. And then Galt, with a little a change of speeds, hesitations, he turns, cuts back, and once he gets in the open, nobody's going to catch him. He returned five for touchdowns when he was at Tennessee. Willie Galt provides a spark for the Chicago Bears. The longest kickoff return ever at Soldier Field by a Bear player. The previous long was Ike Hill against Houston in 1973, 95 yards. Butler with the point after. And quickly, the Bears close the margin to three. Working with two yards of total offense, they just got a kickoff return from Willie Galt. And suddenly the margin reduced to a field goal. This is only his second or third game that he's done this since he got into the pros and he faked towards the middle and then turned up and it was Jeff Hayes number number uh, five if he could have forced golf to cut back into the inside they would have been able to get him but he missed the tackle and then here comes another missed tackle as golf just has got too much speed too much quickness here and takes off and that's an equalizer <laughs> right there. <laughs> well certainly almost that that was a dramatic play by Willie Galt. The last time the Bears returned to kick off for a touchdown was in 1980 when Dave Williams uh, did it uh, at Detroit a 95 yarder. 
that was an overtime, I think, and they won the football game. Ken Jenkins, a former Lion, waiting the kickoff and a line drive shot from Butler, taking a yard deep. Jenkins will bring it up. Jenkins has got some running room, and he is hit by his opposite number, Taylor, at the 31-yard line and gets to about the 35. Good field position, and again, a little extra pushing and shoving on the play. These are two fired-up football teams here today. No flags down, however, and so the Redskins, again, will have a good place to start from at their own 34. Well, I think it was Dean Hamill on the special teams who went after Calvin Thomas, number 33. Oh, there is a flag. Number 78 on the white team in fact that they pushed an official. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's a definite oh, no-no. That's a no-no in the <laughs> National Football League. Here comes, uh, you'll be able to see uh, Hamill. He's 78. He comes in at 33 at the left of your screen and puts the block on, and Calvin Thomas didn't like that, and he kept going. Now, he wasn't penalized for that. The official right there, but he was actually going after Calvin Thomas, and he kind of pushed the official away, and you don't do that. Those <laughs> fragile people out there. He might get community service or weekends in the, in the, uh, in the county jail for that kind of an offense there. First down for the Redskins. But it is back now just inside their own 20-yard line. So the good return by Jenkins negated by the penalty to Hamill. And the Bears, Richard Dent came flying in with Wilson right behind him to put the stop on Rodgers, number 38. And the key in. was Otis Wilson. He went over number 68, Russ Grimm. This time, Otis Wilson, 55. Now watch him leap over the block by Russ Grimm and make the tackle. Otis Wilson says he wasn't going to get blocked on that same play again, and that time he made a super play. I miscalled that, gave that arm move there to Dent 95. It was Wilson 55, second and 11. Rodgers again trying the left side. The Bears shut him down. Wilbur Marshall and Dan Hampton and Mike Singletary all involved in the stop with Singletary at the bottom. You don't have to start Singletary's motor in the morning. He gets out of bed ready to play with a great fury. And that is to play hard-nosed football. He didn't report to camp till very late because of a salary dispute. But he's back, and now the Redskins are in a situation they do not like against the Bears, third and almost 10. Three wide receivers with Keith Griffin for the Redskins. Blitz. Short drop by Feisman, buried by Tyrone Keyes. Last year's number one defense, currently number one against the rush, but only 13th overall, showing some of last year's style. They brought everybody but the kitchen sink. As Sean Gale, 23, took up two linemen, and Tyrone Keyes was there. There were just not enough blockers to block all those Chicago Bears coming. But the Redskins got confused on their, on their blocking, and that's what the Bears try and do. And Feisman had no chance to get the ball off. The Bears sacked him seven times in that playoff game last year. Feisman is standing at the end zone to punt the football. Oh, and it's a bad punt. Feisman off the side of his foot. Now, we had no report on Hayes. We'll try and get that for you. It went a yard. It went a yard. And the word on Hayes is a bruised knee, which may have occurred on the Galt kickoff return. Well, I think that's exactly what happened when he tried to make the tackle on Willie Galt for the touchdown. Uh, he was injured, and Joe Theismann had the punt. He wound up with a one-yard punt, and you talk about a turnaround in a football game. Okay, here's Theismann, one of the few single-bar players left. His form looked pretty good there, but he dropped the ball, and it came off to the right and went off the side of his foot. The Redskins are in some trouble now. So Chicago with an enormous opportunity. First down at the 15-yard line. Theismann forced the punt. And hasn't punted, we're going to try to find out. It's been some time since he's had to punt. McMahon in difficulty, gets the ball off, touchdown! McKinnon!
This time, Jim McMahon, number nine, watch him feel the blitz from the outside, and he'll go forward in the pocket as Walter Payton, on the left of your screen, kicks Malott out, and then here comes McKinnon continuing his pattern, and McMahon right on the dime for the touchdown. He has been magic for Chicago. First completion of the afternoon for McMahon. He is one for four. Butler with a point after. And the Chicago Bears striking suddenly with a kickoff return by Galt, the miscue by the punter, Heisman, and the Bears lead 14 to 10. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at an electric soldier field where the Bears have taken the lead 14 to 10, a 14 yard touchdown pass. McMahon to McKinnon, McMahon's first completion after a one yard punt by Joe Theismann. Butler's kickoff right back to the end line where Ken Jenkins, number 31, made the catch but did not think about bringing it out. So Washington will start first down from their own 20 yard line. Well, we have been able to determine that uh, Theismann has never punted in the NFL. Of course, those of you who remember his college days at Notre Dame know that he was a punter there. He went up to Canada, played with the Toronto Argonauts, and did some punting there in the Canadian Football League. He is listed as their backup punter for Jeff Hayes because of his talent. But however, I did not see him practice on Thursday. I don't know how often uh, that he actually practices punting. And he'll wish now that, uh, that he had done a little more. This is Rodgers. Stuck right at the line of scrimmage. And with his forward progress and effort, perhaps a two-yard gain. We'll see how they spot it. 230-pound Heisman Trophy winner, George Rogers. The fans were ready for this game today, hoping that their Bears can go 4-0. The last time they did that, I think you were still playing, Johnny. It's been a long time since, they, well, I think, 63, when they won the uh, World Championship in 1963. Second and nine, Washington. Rodgers again out that right side where they've had some success. He picks up three, maybe four yards. Wilson and Gale are there, and Mike Hartenstein with the initial contact, number 73. The Bears are into their 46 defense. Third down and five, Washington. Heisman hit. The ball is loose. Recovered by the Bears, and it will be ruled a fumble. Hampton came up with the ball. And it was Richard Dent who got a hand on Theismann before he could raise his arm and get into forward motion, which may have resulted in an incompleted pass. But he did not get the arm going forward. Let's watch. It will come from the left side of your screen. Wilbur Marshall, 58 blitzes. And you'll see uh, Richard Dent is on the outside, way to the outside. Marshall gets blocked. But he gets from the outside, and does Theismann's horn go forward? It does not, as Richard Dent knocks the ball loose. Number 95, the Bears recover. And you talk about a game that has turned around in a, in a moment's time. And so the Bears find themselves again deep in Washington territory at the 22-yard line. First down out of the I formation. McMahon wants to throw to the corner for Gold. It is tipped away by Daryl Green, number 28, who had perfect coverage. A flag down on the play, downfield, away from the ball. Daryl Green, who moves all over the field to cover Willie Galt, wherever Willie Galt, number 83, goes, that's where Daryl Green, because he's the one guy who has the speed to run with Willie Galt. But there is a penalty. Defensive holding, number 55. First down. Mel Kaufman charged with defensive holding, evidently on one of the receivers downfield, not Galt, but an off receiver. And they'll take the penalty, but Jim McMahon had to take some punishment along the way after he gets this pass off. Now watch as he uh, fires for Galt, and here comes Daryl Grant, number 77, to put a hit on him. Calvin Thomas in at fullback for the Bears, number 33, out of the pro set. Give us to Peyton, is to Thomas. Thomas gets to the 15 yard line, a pickup of about three yards. Galvin Thomas from Illinois in his fourth year, signed as a free agent in 1982. Backs up Matt Suey at the fullback position. And the word on uh, Hayes was a bruised knee, as we mentioned earlier, and that forced Theismann to punt. Uh, we'll find out whether Hayes is going to get back into the action. Theismann will be getting his punting practice during this game. 
I don't think the Redskins will kick off to Willie Galt's side anymore either the rest of this game, do you? <laughs> well, I rather doubt it. It is second and nine. Bears in scoring position again. They flared out to Thomas. He's got some room. Thomas gets to the 10 yard line and Curtis Jordan number 22 closed on him well but not before Thomas got inside the 10. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard a six yard pickup. Well obviously this is a key defensive uh, stand for the Redskins because I mean this game is still close at 14 to 7 and as I said when again there's Richie Pettibon the defensive boss of the Washington Redskins a former Chicago Bear who used to be lean and mean he's not so lean and mean but I'll tell you what he knows football <laughs> that's a former defensive back <laughs> third down they had about a yard and a half it would appear big play for the Bears here Come let's keep this drive going and it's out to the tight end Moorhead touchdown Emory Moorhead as they picked up the blitz well and Walter Payton dove over to pick up the blitzer and enabled McMahon time to get the ball off. OK McMahon is uh, Emory Moorhead is way over here at this side of the screen here and you'll see the wide receiver come down and clear and then he goes out and in and the coverage was inside there was a blitz here that the Bears picked up. Now take a close look. And we'll see that play after the point after by Butler. So the Bears extend their lead, having turned two Washington miscues into scores. Okay, fans, here was the blitz man, Tony Peters, as he comes through. McMahon had to get rid of the ball in a hurry, but you're going to see Moorhead go in outside, but the wide receiver was the key. McKinnon came across to clear the zone, and McMahon just hit Emory Moorhead out there. Let's take a look at it. Here comes Peters up the middle. He's tried to get a huddle. McMahon, Walter Payton makes the block, and there's Moorhead to the outside, into the end zone. Coverage from the inside, no chance. They picked up, once they picked up the blitz and got Tony Peters with Walter Payton, McMahon was in great shape because they had a one-on-one -on -one situation on the short yardage. The veteran tight end, Emery Moorhead, nine-year man from Colorado, making the catch for the score. Two touchdown passes for McMahon, who is three of seven now with two touchdowns and an interception. And another bouncing kickoff fielded by Jenkins at the goal line. He'll bring it up. Ken Jenkins, a flag is down. Jenkins gets knocked forward over the 30. Another flag is down. Two flags on this kickoff play, a 30-yard return for Ken Jenkins. Thomas Sanders, reserve rookie running back for Chicago, made the tackle. And these are penalties on the uh, special teams are really important because instead of having field position, I'm assuming it's against Washington. It appears to be at the 25 or 30 yard line. They got to go way back and start from the shadow of their own uh, goalposts, and that makes it tough. We had an illegal block, number 92 on the kick return, and we had offensive holding on the kick return, number 58. And our spies back in New York have uh, called down to the Golden Dome at Notre Dame to find out if Joe Theismann ever punted for the Fighting Irish and the word came back no. First down Redskins. Rodgers hit and dropped for a loss. Richard Dent number 95 a thorn in the side of the Redskins in the playoff game a year ago makes another big defensive play. He got there almost as fast as the ball and he comes from the right of your screen as the Redskins were going to try and counter back on his side 95 Richard Dent made the hit and then some more Chicago Bears came in to trap George Rogers and the Redskins are back at their own three yard line. It'll be second and nearly 17 yards working from the shadow of the goal line Joe Theismann. It's been a rocky start after the Redskins have taken the early lead. That is Clark, Gary Clark. Gaining about six yards back near the original line of scrim scrimmage before Frazier and Fensick put the stop on him. The Bears are doing something very interesting. When they go into their 46, they have a linebacker out there on Didier or Warren all by themselves as a wide receiver. A linebacker trying to cover 
a kind of a speedy tight end if it's Didier is a very difficult job but the Bears do it because they put the blitzes on and they figure that the Redskins don't have time to take advantage of it. Clark's forward progress got him to the 15 leaving a third and six. Three wide receivers for the Skins. Theismann to Clark again couldn't hold on to the ball as he was hit by Richardson number 27 ball a little behind him and then when Richardson made contact Clark did not hold on so Washington will have to punt and it's not going to be Theismann it's going to be Jay Schrader the backup quarterback from UCLA now he is not listed on their Three deep sheet as uh, as the backup punter Theismann is, but it's going to be Schrader. So the injury to Hayes is going to turn out to be a huge factor in this football game. I'm sure he wants to play in this football game, but not as a punter. <laughs> <laughs> not standing at his own goal line either. <laughs> and now the Redskins changing their blocking scheme here on the punt, so that's going to add some more nerves to Schrader. And Schrader kicks a high short punt. Comes down at the 35, is down there and rolls forward to about the 48 yard line. But it'll be uh, brought back to where the Redskins initially made contact with the ball, and that is at the 36 yard line. So Joe Gibbs has got to be wondering uh, how he can possibly make up for this turn of events here. They make up for the loss of. Hayes with 7.27 to go in the first half. The Bears leading 21 to 10 and again have the ball in Washington territory. There he is talking to Joe Theismann going over the uh, the game plan. Uh, it's a little early to change the game plan. They're down 11. That's not uh, insurmountable. On first down. Suey to about the 30 yard line. It'll be a gain of nearly seven. Manley and Olkowitz on the tackle. Look at Buddy Ryan, the defensive coordinator of the Bears, organizing things for the next series of plays. It is second and a long three for Chicago at the Washington 30 yard line. Two short punts have given them yet another scoring opportunity. McMahon has got running room to the 10 yard line. First and goal, Chicago. A 20 yard run by McMahon up the middle. Vernon Dean finally put the stop on him. Well, that's one of his assets, just like Joe Feisman. That time, the regular four man rush has started to cave in on him. There is Daryl Grant was close, but then McMahon just took off down the field. And of course, his big thing with Mike Ditka is try to hit the turf and don't take punishment. Well, this time he got hit, but no injury as the Bears are pounding on the goal line again at the 10 yard line. This is a this is a key drive. The Redskins will be in big trouble if uh, if, if the Bears score here. 21 to 10 Chicago lead. Lots of time for McMahon now forced out and he is dropped. Gained about two yards as he started upfield toward the goal line. Mann and Kaufman, 71 and 55, buried him at the 10 yard line. It'll turn into about, well, maybe a half yard gain. Jim McMahon is the number one rated quarterback in the NFL this year with a 115 rating, which is astronomical. The one thing he hasn't done that Joe Theismann has is that he hasn't shown durability yet. Theismann has played for 156 straight games I believe he never gets hurt and that's really admirable in the quarterback McMahon has never finished a season yet. Second down. 766. Ten yard marker just outside the goal line. Man has plenty of time now flares off to Suey. Good defensive reaction by the Redskins as they bury him as soon as he caught the ball. Neil Olkowitz and Mel Kaufman the linebackers 52 and 55. Combining on the stop Kaufman having to play in all of the uh, passing downs with the Monty Coleman injury. He's on injured reserve with a hamstring. Neil Okowitz is something else. Isn't he had 16 tackles last week plays game in and game out for the Redskins and uh, goes out on the third down situation. But you talk about trying to run against Okowitz. He's tough. The Bears have not gotten much yardage on the ground. Not much at all. It's been mostly passing. 
third down and 14 on the loss. Cherry and Wilburn are in defensively. They give to Peyton. Peyton wants to throw it again. Nobody open. Now Peyton back to McMahon. Touchdown. An unbelievable play, and what a catch by Jim McMahon. He gives a little handoff to Peyton, who was almost knocked down, stumbled, was going to throw the other way back, and then McMahon shows his receivers how do you do it when you throw, as Walter Peyton put it on the dime. He had to stretch out there as the Redskins were full, and he does it just like he wants his receivers. What an example to set for your receivers. Butler will attempt the point after. And so the Bears capitalize again with a little schoolyard razzle-dazzle. And what do they do to celebrate? Well, it's a little odd, but uh, that's what they do. Bang head. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris here at Soldier Field. And, Johnny, it's hard to believe that the Redskins led in this game 10 to nothing, really dominated on their first two possessions. The touchdown returned by Willie Galt, the injury to Jeff Hayes, suddenly 28 fair points. That's right. All of a sudden, a spark, and the Redskins are in some trouble. And the ironic thing is, normally you try and establish a running game like the Redskins did. The Chicago Bears have not even tried to establish a running game. They've just opened up throwing the ball and playing wide open, and it has really caught the Redskins. So you have to give them a lot of credit there, uh, they were down 10 nothing opened up and look at the last six possessions that pretty much tells the story 14 22 and 36 yard lines of Washington and uh, that has told the tale as has this young man who was having some fun out here this afternoon Jim McMahon the former Brigham Young star has been injured in each of his NFL seasons now in season number four and off to a great start. This is Jenkins for the Redskins, tripped up by Jim Morrissey, reserve linebacker number 51 for the Bears, and Washington will start at their own 20-yard line. Uh, one thing McMahon is not good at is cutting here, especially his own. That little effort you're looking at there is by his own artistry, and uh, gratefully, it's he says out. it's grown out <laughs> because it looked a lot worse. Well, let's see whether Joe Theismann can rally back the Redskins here because Theismann got off to a fine start here this afternoon. The Redskins came in confident. They took a 10-0 lead. George Rogers is the running back. He's had two long gainers in the game. Pressure on Theismann, runs out of it, and slides in. Short, well short of the first down, but a gain of about seven yards on the play. Got over the 25 to the 26-yard line. Gary Fensick was there to make sure that Joe didn't get up again. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of the new rule when the quarterback slides feet first that uh, means he is automatically down and you're not supposed to hit him. That can be a tough call because you never know when the quarterback's going to slide first especially if you've made your commitment on the tackle. Five yard gain credited to Thiesman second and five. Didier the tight end comes wide right. They'll show you all kinds of looks for their tight end. Here's Rodgers with another big hole. Rodgers gets a block and a first down out to the 45-yard line. Singletary, number 50, and Fensick, 45, made the tackle, but a 20-yard gain for Rodgers, who's been doing some business out the right side. Okay, this was a case where they caught Otis Wilson, number 55, again, as he came across the line of scrimmage, and the trap man, Russ Grimm, came over and made the block, and that allowed Rodgers to cut inside. There's the block on 55 by 68. Back live the Redskins at their own 45-yard line. Feisman, 7 of 11 for 55 yards. Make it eight completions to the tight end, Didier. A pickup of about four yards with Sean Gale playing for the injured Dave Dewerson. Gale, number 23, making the tackle. Gale, a second-year man from Ohio State. Dewerson bothered with a groin pull injury. And there's Joe Gibbs trying to figure out uh, what they can do to get 
some points on the board before the end of this first half with 229 to go. Well, I think they take advantage of the 229, go down, nothing spectacular, try and get on the board once before halftime, and they're back in this football game. So there's no big rush right now. But the word on Jeff Hayes, a torn muscle in his knee, and he will not return. So that's a huge factor. They tried to swing it out there in a screen to Rodgers, but it was tipped by the Bears defenders. Mike Hartenstein, number 73, got a big paw up in front of Theismann and deflected the ball away third down you know that was really a decent play that would have worked very well the blocking was set up out in front and Hartenstein just deflected the ball little things mean a lot in all phases of life right that play for Hartenstein a, a heartening thing for him as last week the keys got into his position and got a little more playing time in for the veteran so he's looking to make some big defensive plays remind everybody that he's the starter Heisman forced from the pocket. He'll have the first down. Gets into Bear territory inside the 45-yard line. Seven-yard gain for Theismann. It's going to be very close because when you slide is where the ball comes down and your ball, your body is backwards a ways. So it appeared that he made it very easily, and it's going to be a very close measurement because when he slides, his feet go first, and then where his body hits is back a yard or so. That's a, an excellent point since they're going to measure here, Johnny. In fact, he, uh, boy, is that close. I have, let me put my binoculars on and see if I can give you some advance <laughs> notice, folks. I would say, boy, it's too close to call. Looks like he might have just made it. And he did. So it's first down for the Redskins. And they'll spot it at the 46-yard line. We have the two-minute warning sounded here at Soldier Field. The Bears 28, Washington 10. Redskins with a first down on the run up the middle by Theismann. Two minutes to play, first half. Keith Griffin, number 35, hit by Wilbur Marshall after a gain of about three yards. Good reaction by Marshall, the second-year man from Florida. The Bears' number one choice a year ago. Did not see a whole lot of action in his rookie season with Al Harris and of course, Todd Bell still holdouts from that number one ranked defense a year ago. Marshall has stepped in and seems to be getting stronger each game in the opinion of his coaches. Second down, a two yard gain officially. It'll be second and eight. And there are some revealing statistics about what's happened here in the first half. Play action. Didier can't make the grab. A little overthrown for Clint Didier down the sideline. Redskins will use those tight ends, particularly Didier, as good speed, almost as wide receivers, and that was a sample of it there. And that was a time where they had Otis Wilson on him, but they brought Fensick over to uh, help on the double coverage. So here comes a big play for the Redskins, third down and eight, as Gary Clark comes back in the game. Of course, Ken Huff is staying in there at the guard spot with uh, Tielman Hurt. Number 61, Ken Huff was drafted before Walter Payton back in 1975. Theismann, 9 out of 15 now, just 62 yards here in this first half. On third down, a big, big play for the Redskins in this game. Two extra backs in for the Bears, and the pass Pitch. is down. The pressure on Theismann moves smoothly away from it. Now dumps it off short to Didier, and he will be short of the first down by about a yard, maybe a little less. Fensick making the tackle on Clint Didier. 133 remains first half. And Joe Gibbs telling his team on the field to take the time out. So it's going to be uh, fourth down and about uh, six inches as, as Seisman did a good job of ad-libbing. The Bears put the blitz on that time. He was able to get out of it. Couldn't decide whether to run or to, or to pass the ball as uh, Didier seems to have hurt his foot a little bit. Well, after their 10-0 lead, uh, things have just been a nightmare here for the Redskins. Sparked by the kickoff return by Willie Galt, and on that play, what may be the, the key happening of the whole day, the one play, because mm -hmm. of the touchdown produced by Galt that closed it to 10-7, and the kickoff man and punter, Jeff Hayes, getting hurt on the play. Well, I think the decision is on this uh, fourth down play, they've got to get the first down, and it's only just a few inches. Usually a quarterback, even if the quarterback sneak fails, will get you six inches if you just fall forward. Sometimes if you risk the handoff, you can get some uh, somebody knifing through and uh, the back won't get started. So I would say percentages say go with the quarterback sneak and get that first down. 
Three tight ends in on fourth and short here. They had a little muscle up front. The Bears with an 11-1 record when they take that lead into the locker room. And this is going to be close. I think he got it. They, they hit Riggins behind the line of scrimmage, but I believe he might have fallen forward enough for the first down. Hampton made the uh, initial contact, but uh, he is now slow to get up in the Redskins backfield, limping back to the line of scrimmage, number 99, as we wait for the official measurement. Boy, you, you talk about close measurements. This will be closer than the one we had last time. There's Hampton. Of course, he's coming off a knee surgery and hasn't been really 100% through the first three weeks of the season. Big measurement here obviously and he is just short twice now the Bears have stopped the Redskins on fourth and less than a yard so with 109 remaining first half the Bears will have the football again and they hold the lead 28 to 10 two touchdown passes by McMahon one from Peyton to McMahon and one that you could have drawn up in the dirt at the schoolyard well, you run it back from six yards back and you run him off tackle on a slant. Somebody's liable to, to knife through, and that's exactly what happened to uh, knock Riggins down. He fell forward, but he wasn't able to hit that line with the power that he wanted. And that's the chance you take when you, when you run it that way. First down, they come out on the shotgun here. It'll be the 109 drill for the Chicago Bears. Man, off for Peyton, two blockers in front of him. And good defensive work by Darrell Green, number 28, to make the tackle on uh, Peyton. The gain will be about seven yards. And it certainly was a good play by Darrell Green. Boy, he had two linemen in front of him, and they hit him. He bounced off the hits and still made the tackle as the Bears were in a hurry up. Second and two, under 45 seconds we go. Slot formation right out of the shotgun. Off to Suey this time, and McKinnon gives him a block. Suey picks up an extra couple of yards. Out of bounds near the midfield strike. 34 seconds remaining. Rich Mallott, the man to knock him out, number 57. Well, Daryl Green really uh, has been banged around here and still made the plays. This uh, Matt Sui was the safety valve. He's number 26, and you'll see uh, Daryl Green is out there. He gets a block from Dennis McKinnon, hits Green. There he is. Down he goes, but he's still there forcing, getting up and getting in on the tackle. Daryl Green is playing really a good football game. It's kind of hidden sometimes when you're losing 28 to 10. 5'8", 170 pounds with a number one choice. And as uh, the expression goes, he is a blue chipper. First down, McMahon from midfield. Deep, complete. Ken Marjoram, number 82, first down at the 30-yard line, 27 seconds on the clock. Timeout called by the Bears. Curtis Jordan and rookie Barry Wilburn, 22 and 45, made the tackle. You're going to see uh, Curtis Jordan. He's number 22 at the top of your screen. As margin gets by the, the first man is Wilburn. He's actually could have gone straight down the field, but he cuts across. Wilburn on the tackle, and here comes Jordan. And uh, this is real close on a late hit right here, folks. There was no penalty called. So there you see the... Bears uh, organizing for the next series of plays with 27 seconds remaining first half and uh, the disaster that has struck Washington here in this first half after a, a calm 10 nothing lead as I said earlier when I was at the practice in Washington on Thursday uh, they were very calm very well prepared and the way they started out in this game it looked like that they were ready for the Bears offense their defense played superbly on the first two series they marched the ball down the field in old Washington style and I think that uh, those who people who feared that maybe Theismann was losing something at, at uh, this stage of his career 36 years of age uh, really threw the ball so well in practice that uh, there would not appear to be any concern and Joe Gibbs when I asked him about it he said hey his arm is, is as strong as it was a year ago there's no no worry about his ability or his leadership however bad things have happened here nightmarish things have happened Waltz. 99 yard kickoff return the injury to punter Jeff Hayes have really turned this game around in favor of Chicago McMahon that is almost intercepted intended for McKinnon the ball was short and it was Vernon Dean number 32 who nearly had a chance at the pickoff I think what happened was he lost his footing just as he was going to make the interception you see McKinnon 
down and out. And here comes uh, Vernon Dean. And that would have stopped the Bear drive had he hung on to that ball. And it's quartered loose, so the Chicago Bears have 21 seconds as Vernon Dean comes up with a key play. Good coverage by, by Dean. But again, not the turnover. And that's mm -hmm. something that's been that, a big problem. That's for right. They're minus 10 in turnovers. Only one interception until today. Jordan picked up the second of the season. Out of the shotgun, McMahon. Downfield, he's got McKinnon open. McKinnon makes the catch. The tackle by Dean, number 32, 12 seconds to play, and the Bears threaten again inside the 20 at the 17. Another timeout called by Chicago. Dennis McKinnon is now the leading receiver in the National Football League for yardage-wise. Okay, we're going to get a look at uh, Dennis McKinnon. He is number 85. Goes down the field. They have inside-outside coverage. He takes the jam from Vernon Dean. Takes another jam and then just finds the hole. And that is his biggest capability is always to find the right spot and then makes a super catch. He's an undrafted football player, too. You know, the amazing thing about this football game is the Redskins obviously are prepared to stop Walter Payton. How many yards does Payton have? We have to check that out. How many rushing yards does Walter Payton have? Not very many. And that is the changing face of the Chicago Bears, which the Redskins are learning, the Minnesota Vikings are learning, is that they can strike you in different ways. It used to be just Walter Payton's rushing. So the Bears will be first down at the 16-yard line. And the answer to your question for Walter Payton is three carries for minus three yards. That's the amazing stat in this football game. Out to the right goes Marjoram. Out to the left goes Golf. Twelve seconds to play. Little early movement brings a flag. McMahon incomplete. Miscue there on the pattern between McMahon and Galt, the apparent intended receiver, number 83. Charles Mann had the early charge. Let's see if he was drawn over. The referee Bob Frederick will sort things out with his staff. Defense, number 71, offside. First down will be repeated. And it was Charles Mann. He's at your lower left-hand corner, 71 in the white jersey. Just watch the movement there. And he did it on his own. There didn't seem to be any movement on the Bear offense. They're going to go for the field goal now. So onto the field, Kevin Butler, the rookie from Georgia, their fourth pick this year. Beating out Bob Thomas, the veteran, turned up in San Diego. But Butler is 7 for 11 and leads the NFC in points coming into this game with 31. Steve Fuller will hold. And the ball is spotted at the 19-yard line. 29-yard try for Butler right in front of the goal post, and he is good. So the Chicago Bears with four seconds remaining in this first half of play. Officially a 28-yard field goal for Kevin Butler have opened a 31-10 lead over the Redskins. And if you joined us late along the way, Washington led in this game, and impressively so, 10-0 into the early part of the second period. An incredible turnaround, 31 consecutive points by the Chicago Bears. And it will require some heroics by Feisman and company in the second half to get themselves back into this one. And I'm sure Joe Gibbs, as you saw over there discussing the situation, realizes that they have a very difficult situation because the Bears are the best team in the league as far as third down defenses, pass defenses, because they had 72 sacks last year. And when you try and play them from behind, it's very difficult. So they've got a lot of recharting, a lot of things to do in the locker room to come back. It's 31-10, that's 21 points. It's certainly not insurmountable, especially with a guy like Joe Feisman. No matter what anybody says, he's one of the best and uh, one of the smartest quarterbacks. He calls. All the individual plays in the huddle, they just signal out the formation. He usually does the rest. He's a sharp quarterback. Butler's kickoff, Jenkins deep in the end zone, and he will not bring it out. So Washington with 
four seconds. We'll have the ball at the 20 yard line. The Bears and the Rams. The only two unbeaten teams coming into today's action. Atlanta playing at Los Angeles today later this afternoon. Well you got four seconds. Let's call a plate Tim. what are they going to do. <laughs> well they might just decide to run it out here and reorganize. They're not even going to do that. They're going to go backwards. <laughs> Joe's going to just put a little kneel down there. A genuflection ends this first half with the Bears in front, 31 to 10. The 31 points for the Bears, the most they've ever scored in a quarter. And as you see the statistics, 166 to 105, and look at the time of possession. Washington almost 19 minutes to only 11 for the Chicago Bears, yet the, the uh, score is 31 to 10, and that's football. So the Bears will kick it off, and you can see uh, the bad news for Washington in that first half of play. Look at the field position they've had. And it has just been all bad news after their early 10 nothing lead. So let's see whether Theismann and company can rally. It's short kick off to Jenkins. He bobbled the ball momentarily, but now gets it up close to the 20 yard line. And Washington will start from there. Well, it'll be interesting to see uh, what the Redskins decided to come up with at halftime. They're down 31 10. That's a big score, but it's not insurmountable. And I think uh, this is a key series. If they could go down, get themselves at least a field goal or, or more or better for them would be a, a touchdown they would kind of be back in this football game but to to start opening up and trying to throw down field against the Chicago Bears type of a defense you're going to be asking for trouble George Rogers is the starting running back this half he had 71 yards on nine carries in the first half play action fake to him it's off to Muhammad Muhammad is hit immediately but picks up maybe eight yards on the play Leslie Frazier number 21 on the tackle Calvin Muhammad was almost a plaintive figure in practice this week when I spoke to him on Thursday after he didn't make a catch last week in the loss to Philadelphia I said Calvin what did you do after the game he's quite a an outstanding musician and composer he said I went home and picked up the horn and started to write and I wrote a song in two or three days and I felt a whole lot better and he feels that he's ready for a big game today but the Redskins haven't had a chance to get to him second down long two sideliner right on the money complete to Didier what a catch by Clint Didier he gets up and runs to the end zone but they ruled him down the Redskins protesting that the Bear defenders had not laid a glove on him but Didier made a beautiful catch of a perfect pass 27 yard gain and he certainly did and Theismann put it right there but notice the key here was who was covering did covering Didier you can see number 50 Singletary and that number 58 Wilbur Marshall two linebackers covering basically a wide out in Clint Didier. Now that's the kind of defenses you'll get from the Chicago Bears 50 and 58 covering 30 yards down the field. Well and it did show on the replay that Marshall had a hand on Didier and that's really all you need for the officials to rule it down. Although Didier uh, tried to stretch it into a touchdown naturally but it's first down Washington. Didier comes out Rick Walker comes in the give is to Rogers. He's tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by Mike Singletary and fell forward for maybe a gain of a yard. Singletary number 50 the five year man from Baylor 19 tackles three sacks and an interception in the first three games for Chicago and 16 broken helmets in college football <laughs> he broke 16 helmets he used to keep track of them. I wonder if uh, McMahon has broken any helmets with his head butting act here that he does with his offensive yeah. line mates and the wide receivers so it's a half yard game for Washington slot formation left they come out in the eye. And they give to Rogers again hit behind the line by Singletary and then Richard Dent made sure he got no farther and he'll wind up with maybe a gain of another yard. So it'll be third and long and Joe Gibbs said you know this has been part of our problem. We've got to make something happen on first down. Use our runners to get ourselves five or six yards. We're putting the pressure on ourselves on second and third and long. OK let's watch Singletary. He's the guy that gets in and jams it up right away. Number 50. Just finds the gap, comes to, jams up the blocking, and makes the tackle. Three wide receivers in motion is rookie Gary Clark. Blitz. Sideline. Incomplete. 
intended for Muhammad, number 89, and they went to that same pass on the blitz before with Richardson on the coverage. Theismann having to hurry that throw, couldn't get it to Muhammad. You see how the, the Bears differ as the Redskins, usually when they're behind or a team faces somebody, a defense, when you're ahead 21 points, you drop everybody off, you don't blitz, you give them the short passes and try and stretch out and, and win the ball game that way. The Bears keep blitzing everybody. Jay Schrader is in to punt again, his second punt since replacing Theismann, who replaced Hayes. A bad snap, nicely fielded, and a good job by Schrader. The ball bounces into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. But credit to that youngster from UCLA who had to feel the snap and still managed to nearly uh, knock the ball out of bounds before it went into the end zone. Bears in front, 31 to 10. Here's the bad snap by Cronin. And watch the good job that uh, Schrader does because remember, when the ball hits the ground like that, then they can really pile into the punter. He's free game, you might say. And Schrader does a good job of getting the ball and getting it off because they were bearing down on him and a good block there at the last second to uh, protect him. That was Kaufman on Sanders with the block. And a good job by Schrader. And we're told that uh, he doesn't even practice during the week punting. He did some in preseason to help the uh, return men get some work. But uh, Schrader, and not uh, known as a punter, and having to fill in now. So it's first down Bears from the 20-yard line. This is Walter Payton off tackle left. And Payton forced out. They strung him out very well. The initial contact, Vernon Dean, and then Tony Peters forcing him out of bounds. And Payton starts this second half at minus three, Johnny. That's unbelievable for a man who has gained over 13,000 yards, the all-time rusher in the National Football League. And that time, Vernon Dean came up and uh, knocked him out of bounds. So it is a gain of about a yard for Peyton. Peyton has had that sore. He's got a sore rib, kind of, and he's had to take some Novocaine shots to kind of deaden the pain. So he's not at 100%. Second down. Up the middle. It's complete to the tight end. Moorhead, and Moorhead has a Bears first down. Tripped up by Kaufman, but not before he got to the 30. Six yard line of the Bears, 14 yard gain. Emery Moorhead uh, is a kind of delays. He kind of fools around and then delays after he gets up off the ground and uh, makes the grab before Malat makes the tackle. Okay, let's take a look at watch at that. There's the block. He got down on the ground, got himself up, and went out on a delay, a planned play as Emery Moorhead does something for the tight ends. Mostly it's been wide receivers for Chicago. First down, Bears in the wide throw set. Peyton Suey. Flare out to Moorhead. Moorhead hauled down from behind by the safety, Tony, by uh, Vernon Dean, number 32. And it'll be close to a first down. He'll be short, it looks like, by about maybe a yard or less. Two consecutive plays to Emery Moorhead. And there's Big Emery, the man from Colorado, came up as a running back into the pros, turned into a fine tight end. Hmm. <laughs> Dexter Manley's never going to live that down. Uh, <laughs> not in Chicago. Not in Chicago, he won't. <laughs> well, you know, those things are said in the heat of battle. It was right after the game last week, the tough loss against the Eagles. It was a Chicago writer who asked him the question, and uh, he has since said, hey, I didn't really mean it that way, folks, but I did say it. Suey is stacked up by Olkowitz, trying to get the first down yardage. See what forward progress produces. Neil Olkowitz, the middle linebacker, number 52. You see Kaufman there on the bottom of your screen, a little extra pad on the top of the collar that he wears. That's because he has a pinched nerve in his neck, and he missed last week's game against the Eagles. He was ready to play this week, and that was fortunate because Monty Coleman, his backup, suffered a hamstring pull in the Eagles game and he's on injured reserve. Yeah, they're going to miss Coleman a lot. First down for the Bears from their own 47. In motion is Suey the fullback off the wing. Pitch to Peyton. Peyton dances through tacklers, gets to the 50 for a gain of about three yards. You know, I talked to Walter yesterday at the Bears practice and 
asked him about those ribs and he said it really hurts most when I'm bent over because the cartilage between the ribs were stretched and he said I really feel a lot better today than I have uh, since that injury which occurred back in the uh, Tampa Bay game the opening game of the of the season of course he always says oh I'm fine mm -hmm. I'm a hundred percent you know what he was practicing what Theismann and Schrader should have been practicing <laughs> the way things had turned out he was punting which he often does at Bears practices he knocked off a couple of 45 yarders very casually and then went into the locker room. So they've got a backup putter. Second down. McMahon forced from the pocket. Has the first down yard at diving into the 40 yard line of Washington. Olkowitz was there, number 52. This young man set 71 NCAA records when he was at BYU. Not even Joe Feisman did that. They'll spot it at the 41 yard line of the Redskins. And the Bears leading 31 to 10. 840 ticking away here in the third period. And they are driving again. Suey sets up on the wing right. Galt and McKinnon, the wide receivers. Lee Galt at the top of your screen. Peyton. Inside, little stutter step, and he has hit good play by the defensive front of the Washington Redskins. Good play by Dave Butts there as he came across the line of scrimmage and kind of jammed things up. He's going against Tom Thayer, who was a fill-in for Kurt Becker of the right guard of the Chicago Bears. And Dave Butts, you don't get too many yards up the middle on him, number 65. He did a, a super job. Weighs over 300 pounds. 35 years of age, a 13 year man from Purdue. Many observers think that uh, these first three games of the year, Butts has played as well as he ever has. And had all of that experience and using it well. Second down and seven. Play action fake to Peyton. McMahon, a wobbler to McKinnon, complete. Breaks a tackle. And McKinnon takes on Darrell Green, who holds him down, but he's at the 16-yard line. Well, that one wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Dennis McKinnon, which is down and across the field, and Vernon Dean is, uh, uh, lets him go across the field, and he makes the grab as McMahon spotted him on the center, and then here comes the missed tackle by Curtis Jordan, 22, and then the straight arm. McKinnon with the straight arm, and there was Daryl Green. He's the guy that makes the tackle. He's always making tackles. McMahon looks at uh, Dennis McKinnon, 85, as he comes across the field. This is from his perspective. He just has to lead him, and it was Curtis Jordan who doesn't miss too many tackles. He missed it right there. He had already missed it there, but it was uh, Green who knocked him down. McKinnon turned the wounded duck into a swan, and a first down at the 17-yard line. Peyton trying to get wide. Gets a block. Over the 15, a flag down on the play. Charles Mann, number 71. And Curtis Jordan, number 22, on the tackle. Illegal use of the hands on the offense, number 78. Keith Van Horn is number 78. And it will be a repeat of first down. It'll be first and 20. The ball is now at the 27-yard line of the Redskins. We have 624 remaining here in this third period of play on a perfect afternoon for football. It's been perfect for McMahon and company and less so for the visiting Redskins. Man runs out of time lost his balance as he stepped into one of his blockers Andy Frederick number 71 and it'll develop into a big loss. Charles Mann, number 71, was there to make sure he didn't get up, and Darrell Grant, number 77, right behind him. Good pass rush by the Redskins. As you can see, that the Bears' pattern remains to be to throw on first down. That was a first down pass, and one of the reasons, obviously, is that they have uh, Okowitz and people who are stronger against the run on the first down situation than rather than in the passing situation. So... I guess this is an understatement to say that this is a key defensive stand for the Redskins if they're to have any chance. If the Bears score now, I think it's Katie bar the door. Stuart Anderson has come in for Olkowitz. Olkowitz getting a bit of a breather here. 
Second and long. McMahon back the other way. Peyton wide open. Touchdown. Three yards, McMahon to Peyton, returning the favor of Peyton's touchdown pass to him. Now Peyton goes out of the backfield off to the left of your screen. McMahon rolls back the other way. Now Stuart Anderson's got a cover in 58. And notice the presence of mind of Peyton. He has to concentrate on the ball, and then he has to make a move right here to avoid the tackle by Daryl Green and goes in for the touchdown. Boy, the Bears are playing like magic these days. First touchdown of the season for the great one, Walter Peyton. And it comes via the pass as the Redskins have shut down his running today. But they cannot shut down the Bears' pass offense. Butler with a point after. 5-23 remaining third period. The unbeaten Chicago Bears 38, the Redskins 10. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at Soldier Field. Jim McMahon has just passed 33 yards to Walter Payton. It is 38 to 10 for the Chicago Bears. 5.23 remaining third period. Butler, a little wind-aided ball off the tee. will tee it up again. If the Bears win this game, they will be have won their last five regular season games, which is high in the NFL right now. It's the longest streak going. Jenkins, you saw the deep man waiting at the five yard line. The kick into the wind is a short one taken by one of the blocking linemen. And that is number 78, Dean Hamill, rookie defensive lineman, getting a chance to carry the ball. Back line the blitz, Marshall on Theisman. Loose ball, but play is dead. And Theisman took his toughest hit of the game on a straight, clean shot from Wilbur Marshall, the second year linebacker from Florida. Wilbur Marsh is number 58. We'll see him coming to the bottom of your screen. He gets through. Nobody to block. Jacoby didn't know who to block, whether to block Dent or Wilbur Marshall. And Wilbur Marshall got through slick and clean on Joe Theismann. So they're confusing. the. There was nobody coming from the backfield to help out, and there were just too many men coming in. Keith Griffin comes in on second and 17. Here they come again. Deep sideline, and again, Theismann just flung that up there against the blitz. Intended for Calvin Muhammad the third time they've tried to do that in that circumstance and it has failed all three times. Third down here in Chicago. Washington is four of 11 on third downs and they've got a third and long on their own end. Theismann gets some time and he's got Didier. Didier with a first down over midfield. Theismann standing in there. Didier getting clear and the ball on the money for a 26 yard gain. Fensick made the tackle. Good play by Theismann because only a four-man rush. You see the linebackers dropping off 50 Singletary. And Theismann held his ground and then fired that ball, got there in a second as Didier found the open spot and uh, made a nice play. Washington got out of a hole. Good play by Joe Theismann. He's a spot at Didier. First down, Washington from the Bears' 49-yard line. 4-0-4, counting down third period. Slot formation left. Rodgers. Rodgers again with that big hole off right tackle picks up close to nine yards. Wilbur Marshall and Gary Fensick combine on the stop. And that has been the bread and butter play for Rodgers today. Out the right side behind Mark May. Johnny, is that the one where they're pulling those backside linemen around again? Well, you bet. And it's Rodgers who's doing the running. We haven't seen uh, John Riggins all that much. Uh the past couple of quarters of this football game. Rodgers had 71 yards in the first half, including a couple of good long gainers. So, as Joe Gibbs told us, uh, he'd go with a hot hand. William Perry is in defensively now. And Cliff Griff at linebacker. <laughs> Intended and complete to Gary Clark. Number 84 with Frazier on the coverage of first down and goal to go for the Redskins at the eight-yard line of the Bears. What a super play by, by Clark, but mainly by Theismann, too, because they were all over him. He has less Frazier. Clark goes to the inside and then to the outside. Frazier 21 on the coverage, and it was Clark who looked back and spotted the ball first, but Theismann really took a, a pounding, and uh, they were really surrounding him when he threw the ball. Two excellent plays in a row by 
by Joe Feisman, and of course Clark was the receiver with Clark. a good catch. With four catches in the game, one of the reasons Charlie Brown was sent to Atlanta after his contract dispute. This is Rodgers. Rodgers trying to dive back to the five-yard line. Tripped up by Fensick. Yeah, and we'll wind up with a gain of maybe two on the play. It'll be second in goal, and the ball now resting at the six-yard line of Chicago. A score on this drive by the Redskins could uh, make the rest of this half interesting. This is a case where they pull the offside line again, but this time you'll notice that Rodgers went outside the trap block and got in trouble instead of following his lineman. So it is second and goal. Theismann intended for Monk in a big defensive play by Gary Fensick of the Bears, number 45. Monk was open, but Fensick timing his move on the ball perfectly. Okay, let me try and show you that play again where they pull the lineman right there and pull him this way, and they turn up that play that has been successful, but Rodgers went outside of it, and the lineman pulled up, and he got into trouble by going too far, too wide. Now you'll see Grimm and Jacoby. Now they turn up the field. Didier is blocking. 86 is blocking. And Rodgers goes outside and right into Otis Wilson. And that messes up the play. Third and goal here for the Redskins. Deisman. He's got a man open. Didier. And he's knocked out of bounds by Wilbur Marshall at the one-yard line. So it'll be fourth and goal. Clint Didier. Deisman on the money to Didier again. But Marshall reacting. Okay, they're in a crucial situation as Theismann rolls out this way and hits Didier, can't quite get into the end zone. And we're now down to a crucial part of the game for the Washington Redskins because they have got to go for it. Knocked out of bounds by Wilbur Marshall. Fourth and one and a half. Otis Wansley comes in to join Riggins in the short yardage here. And an extra blocker, Anthony Jones. Twice before, the Bears have stopped them on fourth and short. Mm. Wansley is stacked up. Three times the Chicago Bears have stopped the Redskins in that fourth and short, and that one the biggest of the day for the Redskins. They were at the one-yard line. Trying to close this margin, but with 1.37 left third period, it remains 38 to 10. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, uh, where we see the score 38 to 10, and the Redskins uh, two out of seven on fourth down and zero for three today. The Bears start from their one. McMahon in the oh. end zone. Goes deep, and flags are everywhere. Incomplete pass intended for Willie Galt. They're going to call Daryl Green for pass interference. Galt ran a hitch and goal, and Green was beaten on the play, and he grabbed him and knocked him off stride, or it would have been a touchdown pass. Holding is the call, the defensive holding, and we'll get it officially from our referee, Bob Frederick, in a moment. Well, something's... Defensive holding, number 28, your first and 10... A first down pass. He figured Galt was going to go for the short hitch. Now watch 28 come and react to the hitch. He's going to go for that big hit, and he's going the wrong way. He takes a grab of Willie Galt to slow him off stride, so there was no chance for the for the completion. So Willie Galt and the Bears throwing on first down out of their own end zone. Well, that moves him up to the 12 yard line. First down. Wide pro set. Give us to Suey. And the Redskins have a clean shot at him as he ran behind Thayer and Van Horn. And it was Hamill who's in now for Dave Butts at left defensive tackle, number 78, making the stop. He's a rookie from Tulsa, their 10th pick in the 1985 draft. We haven't had any word on, on Dave Butts in terms of an injury. We'll try and check that for you, but Hamill getting some time. Well, he got some time right there. He looked like Dave Butts there. He really jammed that play up. Gain of a yard, second and nine. Slot formation left for the Bears. McMahon, who has been magic McMahon today, from the goal line. Lobs it up for McKinnon, a diving try incomplete. Third down and nine here. The ball at the eight-yard line of the Chicago Bears. 
He'll go to the shotgun. McKinnon in the slot left. Marjoram, the third wide receiver. McMahon takes it up the middle and is tackled from behind by Dexter Manley, number 72. And they'll spot it at the 16 yard line, and it looks like it's just slightly short. Well, that was what you call an old fashioned necktie tackle as McMahon took off, and it was Manley who. Illegal <laughs> motion on the offense. Well, it won't matter anyway. Illegal motion charged against the Bears. Well, if it's fourth down, they may say they may re refuse the penalty and uh, force the Bears to punt rather than take the penalty. So that's what they're doing. They're yeah, going to no ask measure. for a measurement, and if it's Find fourth out. down, they figure the Bears wouldn't try and get first down from the 17-yard line. Well, there's Dave Butts on the Redskins bench, and again, we have not been informed of any uh, injury. Uh, to butt so it may be just that they're giving Dean Hamill some time. How'd you like to pick Dave Butts as a free agent? Huh? <laughs> well that, that was, was after a contract yeah. dispute with the Cardinals back a long time ago and uh, well what an acquisition he turned out to be for the Redskins. It's fourth down so now it's up to the Redskins to say hey we refuse the penalty and take the chance that the Bears won't go for it on fourth down or they could put the Bears way back on their goal line but have be on third down. So that's the decision that uh, Joe Gibbs is uh, he's, he wants a timeout. He wants to think about it a little while. Now there's the decline. He says decline. Did he call for timeout or not. Uh, maybe he's just trying to get his own team's attention. I don't think that he illegal motion would take the time out number 71 and it will be refused and it'll be fourth down. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sharp quarterback. That's huh? right. McMahon saw what team timeout. It is their first one. Washington's and they have two remaining. McMahon spotted that uh, signal and, and whether it was intentional or not by Gibbs I speculated he was just signaling his team to uh, get them to decline the penalty. However we have a timeout and it's 38 to 10 Chicago. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field. Joe Gibbs uh, is looking at the play charts there and uh, hoping to get a chance to use enough of them to somehow get things reversed. Remember, the Bears scored 31 points in one quarter of the second period, so he's got to believe the Red King, Redskins can do the same and they'll be getting the ball back. There's Joe says, Give me a peek at that list. I want to find some new plays. Ken Jenkins awaiting the punt from Maury Buford. Gibbs said all the right things so before this game. He said the Bears are a great team. They're having a great year. Everything was great about them. And uh, so far, the Bears are making him a profit. High punt caught up in the wind. Fair catch signaled. Jenkins comes down with it at the 45 yard line. A flag down upfield near the line of scrimmage. Good field position if it stays where it is in Bear territory. The Bears went into a shift there and tried to pull uh, Washington. Offsides, which would have given him a first down, but the Redskins were too smart. They didn't go for it. Only a 30 yard punt by Buford. And the penalty is going to be against the Redskins. It looks like holding on the play. Offensive holding on the kick return team. Post possession foul. And it will be a first down and 10 after the. 10 yard penalty. Well, instead of being in Bears territory, they're now starting back at their own 44. In that kind of a day for the Redskins. And the pass is tipped away, intended for Monk. Mike Richardson got a hand on it. And Monk was open behind him, but up in the air went Richardson. The Redskins had it played well that time. Had Monk caught that ball, it would have been an easy touchdown because the Bears came with the all out blitz once again. And the pass was just deflected because Monk had gotten behind the defense. You'll see it right here. He could have turned up the field and gone all the way as as um, Mike Richardson batted the ball away at the last second. Second and ten Redskins from their own 44. Rogers the lone setback. Monk wide left. Monk sideliner again and that pass off the mark from Theisman. Frazier on the coverage. Monk on the comeback. With the ball in front of them. And the Redskins are, are taking the right approach, uh, Tim. Uh, they're getting one on one out there. Monk on Frazier. And on the other side, it's one on one as the Bears blitz. 
but they're not able to take advantage of it. Art Monk, who caught 106 passes last year, has won today. And, and he had seven last week against the Eagles. They just haven't been able to get the ball to him. And most of them that they have gotten to him have been for short, short yardage. Deisman is 15 of 26 now, 170 yards, third down and 10. The blitz again, and he is buried. McMichael, number 76. Third sack of the afternoon by the Chicago Bears. Number 76 puts a move on Ken Huff, 61, and goes right on through. He just did a little jab step left and jab step right, and uh, he really did put a move on it. But well, there we go. Steve McMichael says he's number one. He must know where the cameras are. Yeah. <laughs> How do these guys concentrate on that kind of thing? How do you know where the cameras are? All right, Steve. It started out as a as a matchup of the Texan McMichael and the uh, guy from Arkansas, Thielman, but he's out in favor of Dick Huff, uh, in favor of uh, Ken Huff because of the injury. Do we have time for a telestrator on that last play? I would like to show a telestrator play. The floor, the uh, okay. I want to show you the move by Steve McMichael, 76. He's and Huff, 61, is blocking on him. He fakes this way and comes through. Let's watch the move. One-on-one -on -one situation. There it goes, and he just uh, deked him out, comes in for the sack. That's what they call action down in the pits, one-on-one. -on -one. So Washington will punt, as we see Steve McMichael talking upstairs to the defensive staff. And it'll be Schrader again. And another low snap, fielded well once more, and a good kick by Schrader. Ken Taylor at the 26-yard line for Chicago. And he is tackled at the 35 of the Bears. And it is Greg Williams, number 47, on the stop. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Bears 38, Washington 10. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris back alongside Lake Michigan at Soldier Field, where the Chicago Bears have just dominated Washington. If you joined us along the way, it is important to point out that the Redskins led this game 10 to nothing. And we see at least one bare chested fan out there on this gorgeous afternoon in Chicago. The Skins 10 0 lead went into the early minutes of the second period. The Bears scored 31 answered, unanswered points and have added another touchdown in the third. And they open the fourth in possession of the first down at their own 35. Walter Payton. Payton slides for about three. Tackled from behind by Tony Peters. You know, one thing about this Washington loss, it's not as bad as it appears score wise. There were a couple, three things that happened very quickly that kind of turned this game around. I know the Redskins are in trouble. They're going to be one and three going back to Washington where they're used to winning. But uh, Joe Gibbs' teams have come out of it before. They were used to winning in Washington. It's all started with George Allen back in 71. Remember that guy? He went 9-4. I've got it written down here. 11-3, 10-4, 10-4. Washington fans have become used to winning. And so it'll be a little bit hot for the football team back there next week. Second and a long seven. This is Suey. Suey chased by Olkowitz. Short of the first down by about a yard. He got to the 44-yard line. Matt Suey, and there is Steve Fuller, the Bears backup quarterback uh, warming up on the sidelines and uh, he remembers the Redskins well because he went the distance in that playoff game last year with McMahon out with his kidney injury. Fuller was the game winning quarterback. I think Mike Ditka would like to get Steve Fuller in this football game because he was yanked when they brought McMahon in and they've talked about his confidence and all that kind of thing. He would like to get Fuller in here and have a little bit of success. And Fuller was the starter last week against Minnesota with McMahon hurt. McMahon, of course, so well documented by now, came in to throw three touchdown passes for the win. Calvin Thomas for first down has it, but a flag is down. Thomas got to the 49 yard line, and Neil Olkowitz made the tackle. Would Darryl you? Green getting in on it. And the flag uh, will be apparently against the Bears. Offensive holding, number 63. That is Jay Hilgenberg, the center. And third down, Whitby repeated. 
Would you like to see what Walter Payton does when he's not carrying the ball? Here he is. Watch him collide with Malott, 57, right here. He blocks, aside from running for 13,000 yards. Collision. Here comes 34 and 57. Boom. And out of the play goes Malott. The penalty brings up a third and 11 against the Bears. They go to the shotgun. Moore had the tight end in motion at the top of your screen. McMahon and incomplete. Not on the money there. A flag down as it was intended for Marjoram. A flag down on the play on that side of the field. The rookie Barry Wilbur, number 45, had the coverage. Offensive pass interference, number 82. The penalty will be declined. So Marjoram charged with down. Marjoram charged with pushing off Wilburn, and so it'll be fourth down as Washington wants the football, of course, and Buford comes on for the Bears. That's one of the things that receivers will always argue about when a defender comes up and jams him right in the in the face. He thinks that he should be able to push off. Well, the rules say you can't do that. So Buford will stand at his 20, and Ken Jenkins awaiting it at the 23-yard line of the Redskins. Hunt with the win by Buford backs Jenkins to the 15. And now Jenkins finds a good hole and runs it up over the 35 to the 37 yard line. Good return by Ken Jenkins. Matt Suey making the tackle for Chicago. 12.43 remaining regulation time. Bears 38, Washington 10. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris, where the Bears holding a 38 to 10 lead, 31 points in the second period. 12.43 remaining as we are just underway in the fourth quarter. And it'll be Washington football on their own 37. And we note on the scoreboard that Detroit now leads the winless Buccaneers 23 to 9 in the fourth period. The Lions trying to get to uh, 3 and 1. And the Bucks looking for their first victory under Lehman Bennett. First down, Redskins. Heisman complete. Art Monk hit right at the 40 yard line by Leslie Frazier, by uh, Richardson, pardon me, 27. Mike Richardson. No big plays from the pass offense. And that's something that's been missing through the first three games of the season for the Redskins. Remember, of course, they were 1 and 2 last year and went on to a playoff spot with 11 and 5. Play action. Yeah, and that pass, a bad one by Theisman. Intended for Monk and uh, bounced in front of him. Joe uh, not happy with himself on that throw. These teams have played each other since 1937. The Bears lead the series 19 games to 11 with one tie throughout the years. Mike Ditka now will be 19 of his last 26 regular season games the Bears have won. Of course, Joe Gibbs has a pretty good record, I'd say, in his few years with the Redskins after going 0-5, remember? The 42 and 18 in regular season play. Third down and seven, and uh, Bears all over the place, and there is Richard Dent getting familiar with Joe Theismann again. Well, but, should, uh, that was a little bit early. We should have turned the music on for a little <laughs> waltz or minuet. Yeah. Tennessee waltz from Mr. Dent from Tennessee State. Well, let's see if they were. Didn't look false like. Start. There was a false on start. The Ken Huff was called for the false start. Richard Dent, who led the NFC in sacks last year Still with 17 and a half. Down. We haven't seen all that much from uh, Dexter Manley today. He was fourth in the NFC in sacks last year. Yeah, and he's the current leader coming into the game with five and a half. Phillips and Gale come into the Bears secondary on the third down and 12. Theismann going deep for Monk. He's got two men on him and he cannot bring it in. Richardson and Fensick, 27 and 45, were both on Art Monk, not giving him much of a chance to grab that one, and he nearly had it anyway. There's number 81, Art Monk down the field with uh, Frazier 
Richardson running right along with him, and Gary Fincic, 45, will come over, so it winds up with a, a double coverage, a little collision there, but uh, Monk almost made a super grab. He was putting the ball away, but Fincic, 45, the last second, kind of battered it away. So Schrader will punt again. What a job this guy's been doing. That's not a great punt, but a fair catch signaled by Taylor, then had to make a diving catch on it at the 38-yard line. And so the Bears will have good field position, and that punting situation continues to hurt Washington. Steve Fuller has come in to replace Jim McMahon at quarterback, with the Bears holding a 38-10 lead. And Dennis Gentry on the handoff. The Redskins all over him. Gentry on his first carry of the game suffers about a three yard loss. Good play by Daryl Grant that time as he jammed up Mark Bortz. There's Jim McMahon's stats 13 of 19, 160 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, also a touchdown reception. Oh, he did, uh, was that a reception on the end there? Or I said INT, no, but no, that was a reception. interception. Oh, he yeah. had one interception and one reception. Yeah, he so. did something wrong today. He had a pass intercepted. <laughs> he also made sure that Washington was charged with a timeout when Joe Gibbs signaled it in. Another typical day at the office for Magic McMahon. Second and 13. Play action, Fuller. Reitman, the tight end, makes the catch. On the stop, Tony Peters, number 23, Tim Reichman, the rookie from UCLA, has been in the USFL since the Bears drafted him in 1982, opted to go to the new league, and now with the Bears and backing up Emory Moorhead, a flag down, and it looks like the good pass and catch will be brought back. Interesting statistic here on Walter Payton, who is now out of the game. He had seven carries today for six Offensive yards. Offensive holding, number 57. Tom Thayer, seven carries for six yards. So the Second down Chicago, Bears, Chicago Bears have won this football game without that much, at least on the rushing game from Walter Payton. The Bears had decided to attack the one-on-one -on -one coverage that you get a lot from the Washington Redskins. They came out throwing, and uh, that's usually against the trend. Usually a, a, a winning team has somebody who rushes for 100 yards or 50, or Payton does something big in the rushing game. Tom Andrews has come in for Tom Thayer at right guard for the Bears. Andrews number 60. Gentry in motion. Rolling is Fuller back the other way intended for Marjoram but Fuller had Olkowitz all over him who had had excellent pursuit from his middle linebacker spot and Fuller had no chance to throw the ball back cross field. That's a long pass yardage wise when you have to come all the way back to the other side. So they have been using uh, Gentry and Calvin Thomas as we see Olkowitz, the Redskins tackle leader, go off. Suey and Peyton out of the ball game, McMahon out of the ball game, and uh, now rookie receiver number 81, James Manis, comes in. His first appearance, a rookie from TCU. There's number three choice this year. And Brad Anderson, a second year man from Arizona, also in at wide receiver number 86. So they've gone to the second team. Fuller is dropped by Dexter Manley. Dexter Manley, number 72, pulling in from the right side, and Charles Mann is partner on the left side getting in on it. He comes at 71 is the left tackle, Andre Frederick, and he's blocking on Manley, and uh, Manley just goes right onto the outside of him and comes through and puts the hit on Steve Fuller with some help from uh, Charles, Charles Mann, Mann, who was injured on the play as it developed. They had a, quite a collision at the quarterback, and man, a little slow to get up. Third-year man from Nevada, Reno. And apparently he's all right. So the sack drops the uh, line of scrimmage back to the 18-yard line of the Bears. Boy, they might have an all-time record for first down. What is it, about 30 yards? <laughs> Something like that. They started up at their own 39. <laughs> They've gone backwards effectively here. Buford into punt. Jenkins awaiting it for the skins. High deep punt by Buford. Jenkins dropped the ball and now will just cover it at the 35 yard line. So the Redskins will start from there. Reasonably good field position. 
And the Redskins up against it to say the very least. Bill Theismann try to get something going here with the remaining nine and a half minutes. Wide to the right comes Monk. Out to the left goes Gary Clark. This is Griffin, Keith Griffin of the Griffin family of football players. Picks up about three as he's hit by Wilbur Marshall, number 58. Bears have Tyrone Keys, number 98, in the game on the front. Hampton Keys, McMichael, and Dent, the front four for the Chicago Bears. Skins come out in the I formation. This is Griffin again. Keith Griffin, he's got a hole, runs hard, and has a first down at midfield. Griffin, the second year man from Miami. Fensick and Richardson combined to stop him, but it's a first down. Redskins after the 11 yard pickup. He's come on very well for the Redskins. Uh, last year he had some problems with uh, fumbles. Uh, later in the season, but this year he's come on, and especially in third down situations, and has run very well. He's going to be a good football player for the Washington Redskins. He's kind of taken the role that Joe Washington had quite a bit. Well, that's right. They let Washington go to Atlanta. And Griffin takes it outside with Fensick in pursuit, and Griffin another first down. Well, they're moving right down the field via the run. It appeared that hey they're going to run the ball and let's get this football game over with but uh, they had a purpose in their meaning or meaning in their purpose or whatever way you want to say it but uh, they decided they just couldn't throw the ball all that much against those weird Chicago Bear defenses and they're making the running game go however it's eating the clock it's 8 14 left in the game now. First down inside the 35 yard line of Chicago slot formation left for the Redskins. Play action. Weisman, it's batted down by Richard Dent. You know, I watched the Redskins work against Richard Dent in practice. One of their own players playing the part of Richard Dent. They spent quite a bit of time trying to block him. Well, he's done just about everything today. Tackle, sack, and knockdown passes. Okay, Dent is on the top of the screen right there, and you see Jacoby is blocking on him. They get a standoff, but Dent looks for the quarterback and sees he's going to throw that way and reaches up and bats the ball down. 95 on 66. They're just battling, and then he just jumps up, and he's so tall that it becomes an effective weapon. Second and 10. Theismann gets it off. Incomplete intended for Monk. Again, pressure on the quarterback, a hurried throw, and the ball off the mark. Third and ten. Well, you hit it on the head, Tim. Uh, the hurried throw caused him to throw just a little off, and Monk couldn't hang on to the ball, but he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. He could very likely have gone for a touchdown. So the Redskins haven't given up. Monk is just dangerous all of the time, no matter where he is on the field. Acrobatic receiver, and then has that great speed once he's got the ball. Deisman 16 of 31, 173 yards. Let's take a guess at how many how many players the Bears will rush this time or if they drop everybody off. Watch the line and if you see all those backers go. No, just a straight rush. Up the middle for Didier, and he's got the ball or not. No, it's an incomplete pass. The Bears say he had it and we recovered the fumble, but I believe it's just going to be an incomplete. The Bears, down. the Bears with a normal pass rush and uh, Didier who's got some key passes for Washington today breaks away makes the grab. Let's see what a super grab and then down loses the ball. But either way the Redskins lose out on this because if he fumbled it would have been uh, with the ball got loose it would have been Chicago's ball. The flag down on the play is apparently against the Redskins. So it's a moot point right. Yeah it was in the backfield. Here's the call. Or not. Evidently not. It must have been what they call an inadvertent flag. So it's fourth down. And 23 penalties, 10 of them today for the Redskins as though they have hurt themselves in several ways. And the Bears have hurt them even more so. Fourth down. Heisman away from Dent gets the ball off and it is complete and he has I believe the first down yardage. We'll see where they spot the ball. Yes he does. 
John Wiseman shows some of his maneuverability here as he gets away from Steve McMichael. Then a Tyrone Keys 98 is bearing down on him and Richard Dent 95. He throws the ball and then takes a hit from both players and Warren grabs the ball and is forced back. But I think he had gone far enough forward to get the first down and Theismann was complaining about the hit after he released the ball. The defenders will say that they were in motion before he got rid of the ball. What do you think at home. I'd say there was another stride by uh, Dent uh, that he may have been able to elude Theismann on that play but the Redskins got the first down. Don Warren on first down for Monk and a good grab by Monk with Frazier practically a second jersey on him. Monk still made the catch and a and now a flag down with some action at the line between Jacoby I believe or is it Grimm. Yes Jacoby and Richard Dent having some words. Jacoby must be tired of uh, looking at Richard Dent coming all day. That's uh, what he gets paid for of course and it's been quite a battle between those two big men. Monk only got a couple of yards on the play but he made a superb catch. It looks like the penalty uh, is going to go against Chicago. Bob Frederick discussing it with the official on the sideline and we'll see what uh, transpires here. Dent has left the field in the meantime and Bob Frederick has not been uh, able to get that mic on every time that there's been a penalty call. But it's uh, evidently a personal foul penalty against Dent of the Bears and so it's a first down for Washington at the 10 yard line. Tyrone Keyes has come in to replace Dent. The crowd aroused here now and a perfect strike to Monk to the five yard line. And it'll be second and goal from the five with Reggie Phillips the rookie forcing him out number 48. There's Gary Clark in the end zone says throw me the ball throw me the ball. But that happens a lot of times. The, the quarterback's motion and he looks a little bit more open than he was the defenders sometimes react to uh, where they where the quarterback is throwing the ball but they'll probably try Clark again with that quick post down there they've got to they've got to get in the end zone here they can't waste time getting in second and goal 628 to play in the fourth quarter Theismann for the tight end getting intercepted by Richardson. Theismann the only man that can get him. Theismann got a piece of him and he stopped at the one yard line. Ninety yard interception return to the Washington one by Mike Richardson and Theismann at least slowed him up. Keith Griffin able to keep him out of the end zone but they're at the one and into the kind of the double coverage out in the flat that's always a dangerous pass as you can see Richardson comes in the ball hit Didier but it just juggled up in the air and Richardson took off and then it was a race between Joe Theismann and Richardson and Richardson put a good move but Theismann did slow him down and force him to cut back so that there was pursuit from the backside. You know most quarterbacks should be able to get by him uh, very easily but uh, Theismann at least forced him back did not give up he gave it a shot and at least delayed him enough so that he didn't get the touchdown but it looks like it's going to be a moot point the Bears are on the half a yard line. Fuller the quarterback trying for the sneak and he is stacked up by the skins defense they're not prepared to fold up under these circumstances and there is a tired Joe Theismann that's the most running he's had to do today chasing down Richardson the ball was in Didier's hands he couldn't hold on with the two guys defending on him and uh, Theismann to his credit didn't just let him waltz down the sideline on his own he went after him his he is an angry young man his statistics aren't all that bad but just think he has to go back in this game again and the Bears are going to be down forty five or I should say the Redskins are going to be down 45 to 10. Pitch out for Gentry. Gentry touchdown.
Dennis Gentry. Waller Payton's backup gets the score. And here it goes. A pitch out this time. The Bears have used very few pitches. Good blocking. Matt Suey with a key block to spring Gentry up to the inside. First touchdown of the season for Dennis Gentry. We have your basic route. And the refrigerator has come on here to uh, join the special unit here blocking for the point after try. Number 72, William Anthony Perry. And Butler's point after is good. So with 527, somewhat painful minutes for the Washington Redskins, the Bears lead it 45 to 10. Happy Bears bench as you might expect. Butler, 527 remaining regulation time, 45 to 10 route of the Redskins by the Bears. And don't forget the other action next week on CBS. We'll have a full lineup of excitement for you. These Bears will be at Tampa Bay. All I have to say is that the Chicago Bears better beware of the Washington Redskins the next time they play. Jenkins, a yard deep. Pretty good return out over the 20 to the 22, where he's dumped by Sean Gale. And here in Chicago, the Redskins, who have an interest in those standings, of course, find themselves deep in the hole against the Chicago Bears. This is Griffin. Keith Griffin gets about a yard. Cliff Thrift and Mike Singletary on the tackle. Flag down again. And the Chicago Bears may have had too many Finn on the field. Right now they have 12. And nobody's coming off yet either. Well, they want to go two for two. Mike Hartenstein, <laughs> 73, comes off the field. Little problem with the uh, microphone on referee Bob Frederick. That has been a problem here through the fourth period. But uh, we are going to assume that the call was 12 men, an extra man on the field. Henry Wachter is now in number 70 defensively for the Bears as they're getting their special teams players uh, some work with the defense and offense. And they're still playing that 46 defense, the Bears. First down and five. Griffin again gets away from Perry and then is met by several shirts. The ball comes loose, but. Well, I'm not sure it did. Griffin just kind of popped out of there, and I guess he still had the ball. Great effort by Keith Griffin. Did they give him all of that or not, we'll see. Perry and Singletary finally stopped him. Elsewhere, the Vikings mm. and Buffalo. That's been quite a seesaw battle, 27 to 20 into the fourth. And St. Louis leads Green Bay 36-21 in the fourth quarter, a high-scoring affair. Look what Detroit's doing to Tampa Bay. 30 to 9, fourth quarter. The Raiders 28 to 20 over New England fourth quarter. Griffin got the first down, so it's first uh, first down from the 35 yard line for the Redskins. Ken Jenkins, number 31, gets his first carry of the game, and Singletary on the hit. Two yards on the pickup for Jenkins, second and eight. Bears are plus six in turnovers, and that has resulted in 30 points. And as we commented coming into the game, the Redskins were minus 10. It's such a key thing in the NFL. The pass complete to Gary Clark. I like what I've seen of this young man today from James Madison in the USFL. Gary Clark, number 84. First down again for the Redskins. Jenkins breaks a tackle, and Jenkins breaks loose. Ken Jenkins inside the 15-yard line. What an effort by Jenkins. Gary Fensick finally pulls him down with help from Leslie Frazier. Here's the return man from Bucknell, acquired on waivers from the Detroit Lions. Gets himself a nice run here. And what a job he does. 23, Sean Gale will come in and hit him head on, and he busts the tackle and then takes off up down the field as the Redskins may be able to get a touchdown before the game is over. Good run here. Good determined running as the Redskins showing some, some real life. I know it's late, but we'd like to end up on a good note if possible. 
They're at the 15 of the Bears. 3-0-1 to play. Monk in motion. Swing it out for Griffin. He's got one blocker in front of him. Nice move inside by Griffin. He'll score, but a flag is down. Keith Griffin. A flag down back near the line of scrimmage. It's going to be holding against Washington, I believe. Tough break for the Redskins in a game like this. And especially for uh, Keith Griffin, who made a superb play. Offensive holding, number 61. Ken Huff. A charge against Ken Huff. And remember, uh, he lost his starting job today to R.C. Thielman, who came over from Atlanta in the deal for Charlie Brown. But Thielman got hurt the first period, and Huff has played since. Okay, the, the screen kind of set up nicely. There's 61. There's Ken Huff. 61, he comes out in front of Griffin uh, along with Mark May. Now, there's 61 blocking on Rivera. Right there, he gets a hold of him right behind the first down marker. He's got a hold of him. Looks like he's got a hold of him. It's tough to tell, but. So they're back at the 25 yard line. First down. Theisman gets some time. Off to Griffin, and he is buried by big Tyrone Keys. Gain of four yards. Boy, give Griffin some credit for catching the ball. You had six foot seven, 290 pounds of romp and stomp and dynamite <laughs> coming right at you, and he caught that football. Nice going, Ken. Second down and 15 from the 20 yard line of the Bears. Intended and intercepted by Taylor in the end zone, intended for Warren, I believe. But again, miscommunication by the Redskins, a problem from the beginning of this early season. And Ken Taylor, the rookie from Oregon State, comes up with the intercept in the end zone. Well, what a frustrating day for Joe Theismann. He's had some great days, but today things have not gone the way for the Washington Redskins. It's yeah. regrouped for next week. We're under the two-minute mark left in the game. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field, a disconsolate Joe Theismann on the Washington bench, and nine interceptions so far, two of them today, 21 of 39, 209 yards. But none of them for scores. The only Washington touchdown came on their opening series with an impressive drive, ended with a run by John Wiggins. They looked like the old Redskins. It's been all Bears since. Mike Tomzak is now the quarterback for the Bears. They're down to number three, giving the young Ohio State star some work. And Thomas Sanders, the rookie from Texas A&M, is the ball carrier, number 20, picking up about four yards. Tomzak signed as a free agent, a local boy here in the Chicago area from Calumet City, Illinois. Second leading passer in Ohio State history. and. Uh, really a surprise to make this Chicago team uh, and not too many teams keeping three quarterbacks. So I guess that speaks uh, as to how Mike Ditka feels about Tom Zach. Oh. Six one hundred ninety five pounder. Second down and six. Thomas in motion. This is Sanders again a big hole for Sanders. And Sanders over midfield into the 47 yard line before Kaufman stopped him for the skins a 28 yard run by the rookie Sanders who looked good in preseason for Chicago. This is the young man that the Bears feel could be the heir apparent for Walter Payton when he decides to retire. Uh, a nice little draw play great fake by Tom Zach and uh, Sanders just goes down the field and shows some little little niftiness with those quick feet almost stumbled there but he can run he can run the football his problem has been that he has been uh, a fumbler. He has had a tendency to fumble so far in his young career. Vernon Dean left uh, limping for the Redskins. And meanwhile, the Bears have brought in Tom Andrews for Mark Bortz, who seemed to be favoring his hand when he came off. Sanders picks up about three yards to the 45 yard line. Tom Beasley, number 67 in the game, made the stop. And we have 15 seconds and winding down. That's going to be it. The Bears will not bother with the final play. 
And they have moved to 4-0. and And Joe Gibbs goes back to Washington knowing what awaits the Redskins there as they are off to a most disappointing 1-3 and start. So the Chicago Bears moved to 4-0. and They were impressive to say the least. The final score at Soldier Field, the Bears 45, the Redskins 10.